Hi, welcome to Face the Facts. It's great to see you once again. I'm Nick Face. Brad Agostinelli, how are you? Thank, fine, thank you. Good to see you once again. Thanks. This is actually the day afterwards when we're taping this show of when the World Series was won. Chicago Cubs were victorious in that lovely, <laughs> it was long, intense. <laughs> intense. Yeah. Everything about it was a fantastic game. Mm -hmm. Final score was 8-7. to seven. Chicago Cubs ended up pulling off that victory first time in 108 years, amazingly, that the Chicago Cubs yeah. get a World Series. I know, series. it's hard to believe. Let's start from the top. This series was everything that you love about baseball. Yeah, it's true. Mm -hmm. What stood out to you the most during this seven-game fest? Mm -hmm. I think just the drama and suspense of, I mean, that's kind of what postseason baseball gives you is right. more than other sports in the postseason is that it's almost drama and suspense that leaves you hanging, especially if you're a fan of the team. Um, but also, they turned out to be pretty evenly matched teams. I mean, obviously you went seven, but um, in some of the games were a little lopsided. But overall... You never would have, I, would have, I never would have thought yeah. that going into this series. The Cleveland Indians were a team, I thought, riding high on mm -hmm. kind of in a way luck. I thought that their team wasn't as superior to the, to the Cubs. Mm -hmm. yeah. I honestly thought the Red Sox had the best chance at matching up against the Cubs. So did I. Yeah. I think a lot of people did. But anyways... The Cubs were able to amazingly win three games in a row. Yeah. I did not see that coming at all. Mm -hmm. It didn't – yeah, I agree. I didn't I – didn't, I wasn't like, oh, I'm, you know, I assume the Cubs will come back and win. But at the same time, it wasn't totally surprising for me because, I mean, we had brought up the Indian starting pitching issues. And mm -hmm. um, even before game six and seven, you hoped that well, – you really didn't know if Kluber can do the same thing on – a third star on well, short asking rest. Asking him to pitch three games yeah. in a series. So that that's, that's a part lot. of the reason for me. Yeah, it is. Let's look at the Cleveland Indians first. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about what we thought was highlight players. Right. And sure. and, and and then look at the Cubs. Mm -hmm. I think it's only fair to make sure that we talk about both teams because both teams, I mean, both teams deserve that World Series. Yeah. I mean, Terry I Francona yeah. after the game last night was talking about somebody had to win, mm -hmm. and somebody had to lose. Unfortunately, they were the team that lost. He gave all the credit in the world to how that team was so resilient. Mm -hmm. They kept battling. They kept fighting it out, seeing who was going to prevail. I I'm just looking back through past history. Yes, the Red Sox is right up there for me from 04. Th this one may actually be number two for me mm -hmm. after it all. Just by how much emotion and drama and... Yeah. How much was on at stake here? And so many stories and so much going the on. The storylines so are just about. tremendous. Yeah. The storylines mm -hmm. are tremendous. So let's mm -hmm. look at the Cleveland Indians first. Corey Kluber asked to pitch three games, to start three games. And here's a guy that was injured really right before so, this yeah. playoff started. Mm -hmm. um, he just did everything the Indians could have asked for. He stepped up. He was a big game pitcher. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, last night, the problem with him was elevation. Mm -hmm. He kept leaving everything high. The Cubs were just tattooing the ball. Yep. Yeah, and they were talking about how um, in a second start, he kind of changed his approach a little bit yep. in the sense that the first start, he was going after him with a lot of fastballs and that um, good kind of, kind of two series he has off the, off the inside corner of the lefties. Um, but in the second game, the, the uh, Cubs came out kind of aggressive at the plate, and he mm -hmm. threw a bunch of breaking balls at him. Yes. So he adjusted in that, but you wonder at a third time through – not even the order, a third time through the whole game. Mm -hmm. They've seen him a lot. So you, you wonder how much more, how many oh, more adjustments he They saw a lot of make. guys yeah. quite a bit. And, yeah. and Kluber was right there. There was mm -hmm. pretty much no secret on what was going to be tossed. Yes. So they could yeah. be aware of what was going on. You saw the hitters from the Cubs start getting more hot as mm -hmm. the series got yep. um, progressed. Yeah. Bryant heated up. Rizzo heated up. Mm -hmm. uh, Zobrist, who got the MVP yep. from last night, just was... The man. Similar to last year. I mean, you look at him, two yeah, World Series in a row. Exactly. You know? That's something that doesn't happen that often, but you have a guy that won with the Royals last year yeah. and now mm -hmm. is a world champion again mm -hmm. for the Chicago Cubs. That's just that's just amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, can't can't say enough good things about 
everything about that team. But Kluber was only one of the guys from the Indians. Yeah. There's also right. a lot of other names that need to be discussed as well. Mm -hmm. um, I also want to look at some of the other guys in their rotation. Trevor Bauer came out of their bullpen yep. uh, last night. That was his third time in the series, again, two. Mm -hmm. Bauer came in and kind of alleviated any future damage or any other yeah, possible that damage that come the time, in. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. he let he exited, uh, he allowed the Cubs to leave the bases loaded, leave it eight to six going into the bottom of the tenth. So Bauer coming out and doing his job was fantastic. Any other starters that deserve any kind of mention? Um Without having watched the Indians too frequently, uh, Tomlin was kind of surprising. I mean, I know yeah. he, I, in game, um, what he pitched, he pitched game six. I mean, you, I know they, they lost that game. But, mm -hmm. I mean, for the rest of the playoffs, he was pretty good. And yeah, I think he, he was. He's a reason that they were able to get that far and keep rolling yeah. until, obviously, the, the I mean, end he has of the a, Series. He has a team that was pretty much without Danny Salazar, without mm -hmm. Carlos Carrasco, two guys that they counted on in their rotation quite a bit. And other guys just stepped up. The Tomlins and the Bowers of the yeah. world mm -hmm. did their job. On the other side of the ball in the bullpen, I personally preferred the Cleveland Indians bullpen versus the Cubs bullpen. I agree. Yeah, totally. You have, yeah. first of all, starting with the closer, which was Cody Allen. Mm -hmm. Cody Allen was just as good as advertised mm -hmm. with Andrew Miller. I mean, that one-two pair is something that, in my opinion, was the reason why this series won seven games. They yeah. stepped mm -hmm. up. What I loved about... How they were managed is how, when we're going to talk about the manager comparison too a little bit later, but Terry Francona would go to Cody Allen before Andrew Miller or Andrew Miller before mm -hmm. Co or after Cody Allen or before Cody Allen or, or vice versa. What mm -hmm. that means is these guys were resilient to, they can go in at any point. They yes. can go in in the fifth inning. Right. They can go in the sixth inning, seventh. Mm -hmm. It didn't matter to them. They're yep. going to take the ball, get the job done, and, and, and make... Uh, uh, get out of the jams that were needed. Andrew Miller, wh I thought, was the MVP of the Cleveland Indians. He, he took hit the ball. He did everything that you could have asked mm -hmm. for. Yeah. There's a guy that, without Andrew Miller, I don't think the, Chicago, uh, the Cleveland Indians were anywhere close to being in the World Series. Oh, yeah, I agree. And then I'm um, playing off of... What you just said about how they can go in at any point. I mean, when Andrew Miller was traded to the Indians from the Yankees, um, what you were hearing is that he just went straight to Terry Francona and said, "Listen, I, you know, I got my contract. I'll pitch any any time you want me to do. I'm, yeah. I don't need to pitch in any certain inning." Right. Um, and he didn't need, he didn't just eat up innings in the playoffs. He like he ate up solid innings. Yes, he and did. He just, I mean, really, in, until until Game Seven, no one hit him. Maybe a solo home run. Other than that, but. He was, he was Has great. the game of baseball changed in regards to the relief pitchers? I think we saw it change before our eyes in the playoffs, but it's hard for me to believe that's going to translate to the regular season because if, okay. if, if managers start doing that, to me, it, I think relievers are going to get burned out, especially mm -hmm. guys like Andrew Miller. I mean, I know, I know those, are the, pitched, those are the top-tier guys. They pitched the most pitches they've ever had in Major League Baseball history yeah. for relief guys. Mm -hmm. Chapman was number one, <laughs> and we'll get to that in a yeah. second. Yeah. <laughs> And Andrew Miller was number two. Yeah. That was absolutely insane mm -hmm. on how much they asked their closers yeah. to pitch in that series. And that I and I think in the playoffs, that's what we're gonna see from now on. I mean, and really it started with Terra Francona. Imagine I mean, even that, early on. Imagine that being let's look at your your team for the Mets. Mm -hmm. That was um, familiar. Yeah, uh, yeah, familiar was the closer and Addison Reed was their great side. Imagine yeah. asking them, Oh, the seventh inning's here, you're going for nine outs. Yeah. How would you feel as a fan? I'd feel nervous. Yeah. I mean, even when they brought in, I was in the, I was in the car time, but even when they brought in Chapman yeah. um, with, in, in game six to get eight outs, I was like, I said, what, what the heck is going yeah. on myself? And then he's, he just finished it. But for me, I'd be nervous. I would partly feel the same way. Be, probably because I'm not completely confident in him. Um, but also, he rarely went over one inning the whole regular season. Right. So it's almost like, I mean, I know it's the postseason, but that extra expectation and then it, you're asking him so much more, it makes you think what you don't you don't have a confident idea what's going to happen. Well, Craig Kimbrell for the Red Sox came in. He was the big trade that the uh, Red Sox mm -hmm. got before the season kicked off, and we saw uh, for any Red Sox fan or anybody that was watching the team knows that Kimbrell outside of an in a non-save situation was absolutely dreadful. Mm -hmm. He could not be trusted. Mm -hmm. His ERA was like five something. 
it was not the same guy who would come in in the ninth inning. Now, that's not to say his ninth innings were that great either. He was very <laughs> shaky, to say the least. <laughs> he's a heart attack closer. He's going to walk guys. Mm-hmm. He's going to put people on. Then he's going to come by with the 98-mile-an-hour fastball and blow it by you if he's mm-hmm. lucky. Yeah. Kimbrell, I could never have seen in a Red Sox jersey throwing as much as Chapman or Miller did. And I don't think before— I would not be comfortable with that, first of all. <laughs> and before that, I don't think people could see Chapman doing that because the no. thing on him that I was hearing was, yeah, he's one inning and done because he should throw so hard. But, yeah. and I mean, we'll talk about how that ended up. But, I mean, he, he finished in game six, and that was a one-run game I from the, the time he way. came in. Yeah, I feel the exact same way. So you had the big two for Cleveland, which mm-hmm. was Cody Allen, Andrew Miller. Mm-hmm. You can also put Brian Shaw in there because he kind of mm-hmm. solidified that bullpen yeah. a little bit. Granted, he was mm-hmm. the uh, losing pitcher last night, but it certainly did give them a boost to have reliable guys that they could count yeah. on. Yeah, yep, exactly. On the other side of the diamond, uh, we're lo- actually staying on the diamond, as a matter of fact. We had other players on the Indians who mm-hmm. kept getting big hits, clutch moments, time after time. One of those guys included Carlos San- uh, Santana, yeah. who mm-hmm. amazingly was put into the leadoff position. Yeah, it was the interesting. Yeah. You, you look at the mm-hmm. guy and you're like, he's leading off. Mm-hmm. He does not look the part of a leadoff guy. Yeah. But, boy, when he gets a hold of a ball, he can he hit He has it. a pretty swing. He has yeah. a very pretty and, swing. And uh, it was cool to see him play this. I really hadn't watched him yeah. regularly before this postseason, so yeah. it was nice to like, see what he does. Looking at some other guys that had some great moments in the postseason, one of them included Francisco Lindor. Mm-hmm. There was a great play in the ninth inning oh. last night. I don't know if you got a chance oh, man. to see that. Yeah. That, that was some range right there. Yeah. Laid out, got that ball. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a couple people that were um, tweeting during the game, and a couple people said, Edgar Renteria hit the same ball in 1997 against and the, the Marlins, yeah. and he got <laughs> and a base hit. Yeah. <laughs> now, that's a, an out, mm-hmm. a huge out. Yep. And that changed the uh, complexity of that inning quite a bit, too. Yeah. That should have been a base hit. I think it was, um, was it Fowler? Fowler hit it, yeah. Fowler mm-hmm. hit it, who had an amazing game last night. Mm-hmm. And he, unfortunately, was out and did the, uh, making the game go to a rain delay <laughs> and the top of the 10th wow. inning. Yeah. Mike Napoli is a guy who had pretty much a, a bounce-back year. Yeah. A guy that was with the Red Sox, won the World Series championship in 2013, and was able to find himself onto the Cleveland Indians roster for a one-year deal. Hit 30 home runs. I think he had 99 RBIs. Yeah. Uh, no, no, 101. 101, mm-hmm. excuse me. He did hit the uh, century mark. What do you think he added to the Cleveland Indians? I think he added the fact that he'd been there before. I yeah. mean... The runs were a little similar to me between the Indians and the Red Sox in 2013 just because um, it just kept going. Yeah. I mean, they kept winning. Um, and there was a little, you know, magic or destiny feel there. Um, so he had that. He had that going. A mm. um, little disappointing in the postseason, though. He didn't, he didn't hit well, especially yesterday. There were a couple of big at-bats he had that you, you, didn't go you well. You saw what infuriated Red Sox fans. Mm-hmm. You saw in the postseason why the Red Sox – decided to release and trade Mike Napoli when he was going back to the Rangers. He's a frustrating player to root for. Hmm. He's either going to strike out or he's going to hit the long ball. To me, I, I, I don't like that. I would rather a guy, yep. I think everybody would, who consistently makes contact with the baseball, mm-hmm. makes a productive out. A strikeout yep. to me is not a productive out. Put the ball in play, get that run in. So that's something that Napoli doesn't do that great of a job with. Mm-hmm. Could it have cost them? No, it didn't cost them in the World Series. It didn't mm-hmm. cost them at all. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to look at him. There were other plays that looked at it, but yeah. you saw why Mike Napoli was taken off the mm-hmm. Red Sox roster. Yeah. And Hanley Ramirez and everything was moved, moved over to first base, and uh, kind of that's history there. Mm-hmm. Um, any other players that deserve some recognition from the Cleveland Indians? I think Jason Kipnis had a pretty good yes, year, Yes, you do actually. have to mention um, Kipnis. He, um, a lot of clutch, a couple home runs. Yep. And he, he was kind of, you know, it, as I was watching the Indians, it seemed like they had a lot of similar players in that sense. I mean, some of them look, look similar from the left side of the plate especially. But yep. a lot of those players who just do their jobs, you know, get good at bats every time mm-hmm. um, and, and get big hits. Mm-hmm. And 
maybe a lot of that's from Terry Francona. Yeah. Um, but I think Jason Kipnis is, a, is someone who was solid at second base, and he's good. He they was said good that the he's the heart and soul of the Cleveland Indians on mm -hmm. the broadcast last night. Yeah. I totally believe that. Mm -hmm. um, I love his style of play. He reminds me a lot of a, a Dustin Pedroia from the left yeah. side of the plate. Mm -hmm. He's a grinder. He gives his all when he's playing the game. He comes up with some big hits and some big moments. Mm -hmm. That's uh, all you can ask for as a big league player right there. Yeah, he, he, and uh, Kipnis scored that second run on the two-run wild pitch, too. Yes, he did. Uh, and, uh, that, that got the Indians back in the game. That was right yeah. there. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking of heads up and clutch plays, you have to mention Rajah Davis. Mm -hmm. It was 6-3 to three in the... Uh, bottom of the ninth, mm -hmm. and eighth. Oh, I think it was the eighth, I believe. Uh, it, uh, was it eighth? Yeah, he yeah, it was in the eighth, in the yeah. eighth inning. Mm -hmm. That is correct. And Davis comes up and hits a home run off of Chapman, the first home run Chapman has allowed since June when he was a New York Yankee. Mm -hmm. What did you think of that moment? I I couldn't believe it. Yeah, I mean, I was thrilled. I thought it was awesome, but I, I was I, like, I this is up. not happening. My, my 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 expression on my face was, Are you yeah, kidding me? Same. Yeah. It was it was crazy, and I after that I thought the Indians were going to win. So I did was I. Like, there's there's no I mean, he doesn't trust anyone else in the bullpen. They're hitting Chapman. Yeah. He, I mean he's not getting anything past them, and I thought the Indians were going to keep rolling. I couldn't believe how big of a hit and big of a moment that was for Davis. Mm -hmm. Those fans went nuts yeah. as they should have. I mean to get a big hit off of Chapman. I know Chapman made the mistake with the pitch and all, but. Davis isn't a home run hitter. No. He's not. No. But he was able to get his pitch and exit that park in a hurry for yeah. the Indians. Mm -hmm. And that gave the Indians, uh, they took, that took them off life support. Yes. They finally had True. a pulse mm -hmm. after that big home run and all. Mm -hmm. Any other big moments that deserve to be recognized for the Indians during the playoffs and during the World Series? Um, I, I think Kluber, I know we brought Kluber up already, but I think his starts, I mean, I think every time he went out he was there, their ace. He, he gave them new life. I mean, they, I think they knew they had a chance to win every time he went out there. Yeah. Um, and I, I saw a state yesterday where this was the first World Series that no starter went past six innings. They didn't yeah. get it out past six innings. Yeah. I mean, his starts, he went six yeah. usually, but he gave one, only one, one or zero runs. Right. But I think those starts, to me, um, until the end, you knew what you were going to get, mm -hmm. and they needed him to be that until like for them to stay in it so i think his starts were big now let's move across the diamond or next door we're going to talk about the chicago cubs mm -hmm. here's a team again 108 years since they have won a world series they certainly didn't disappoint at all throughout no. this series no. being able to come and uh, win three games in a row mm -hmm. they were down 3-1 after game four game five came at wrigley field and that to me was the the most defining game of the series. Mm -hmm. It was a game that was played in front of the home fans. Chapman was asked to come out and do his magic, and boy, oh boy, did they deliver there. Game five was my trigger that said, you know what? The Cubs may actually have a chance here. Mm -hmm. The best moment to me after that win that the Cubs got is the fans. Mm -hmm. The fans went nuts. They finally believed, I think, in their team that, you know what, we can do this. Mm -hmm. We're down, but we're still fighting. We're going to do it. The song, I don't know if you got a chance to hear it. It was, hey, Chicago, what do you say? The Cubs are going to win today. It was the Chicago Cubs song. Mm -hmm. Those fans started singing that song after that game in game five, and, I, and it, you kind of were able to buy into it. Yeah. I was able to buy into it a little bit because mm -hmm. before I said, you know what, I think Francona has the upper hand. Mm -hmm. He's the better manager, I thought, of the two. He was the one that I thought managed his bullpen better, came up with the right calls and the right plays. Mm -hmm. So ma managerial-wise, Terry Francona was my guy even after this whole thing has been won. Yeah, he agree. was the number one mm -hmm. guy for managing-wise. Yep. Because Joe Madden, if you look at some of the moves that were made last night, a lot of second-guessing, a lot. A lot. First of yeah. all, number one, I would never have taken Kyle Hendricks out as early as he did. No, no, he yeah, should have I stayed. Yeah. I mean, it was what five to one. They at hit the time? a forward lead, and there was only one runner on base, and there was it, there was at least one out in the inning. Yeah, I don't think I don't think it was a it was an five inning. to one. I think yeah. the score was there. Yeah. he had a guy on base, and he decided to go to John Lester, which is fine. I understand that, mm -hmm. but why bring Lester out of the bullpen with a runner on base? That's what they were saying, and he did it. I, I don't, don't know, get I don't, that. Yeah, I don't understand. I still didn't that understand it yeah. because that's what amazing. That's what actually led to the two runs being yep. scored by the Indians. Mm -hmm. On the wild pitch, the ball going off David Ross. Yeah, that was strange too. Did you? Yeah. What did you think of that? 
I, I don't think I'd ever seen when a, a, a ball like bounced straight into the ground and hit catcher straight in the mask. I, a lot of people thought he was out. I, th- I thought he was affected too because he kind of stumbled and fell over. I think he just tripped, but yeah. it, it looked it looked strange. Yeah, yeah. That and did, then oh, they thought done concussion. Yeah. he's out. That was exciting too, just to see. I mean, that put the Indians back in the game. It did. It made yeah. the game. It, it mm-hmm. gave the game an exciting feel. Like, all mm-hmm. right, I have to sit on the edge of my seat to watch the rest of this. Yeah. Um, but Lester, uh, the Hendricks was definitely one of those moves that I second guess. Mm-hmm. The next move. John Lester. Mm-hmm. Why did John Lester get taken out in the eighth inning with two outs? Why? Runner was on base. That, that, that's to me. That's what it seems like was the logic. Okay. If someone, if someone's rolling and we know who's next coming out of the bullpen, no matter what lead you have, if there's runners on, you got to take him. I mean, that that that's did you like that, that move? He, no, no, I yeah, didn't. I, I would have, I would have, yeah. I left him in. Maybe I, it, w- it would have made more sense to me if you got two runners on, because then you got a rally going. Right. Maybe he's running out of gas, being only having one day off. Mm-hmm. But one runner on, to me, it's not a rally yet. I right. mean, to me, you still have basic control of the inning. So yep. I was surprised. Um, like I said, it worked out, but I, I wouldn't have done that, especially because of what Chapman did mm-hmm. in Game Six, sure. which also we, uh, we didn't talk about, but. I mean, you, you were not talk about that right you now. You weren't sure how long yep. he was going to go because Chapman. Yep. There was that thing in Game Six where they brought him in. Yeah. They had him warming. They ha- they had a five run lead. They went to a seven run lead. They still brought him in. It I was believe. seven to two, yeah. right? Yeah. And he mm-hmm. came in in the seventh inning. He came. Oh yeah, he came in. Then they added two, I believe, in the next half inning, and then they left him in nine to two. Yes, yes. they did. And we were kind of confused as to why he brought him in with a five with a five run lead anyway, because mm-hmm. to me that's. That speaks to what Joe Madden thought about his bullpen. In the sense that he can't rely on anyone else to get one or two outs with a five-run lead. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, it's game six of the World Series, and you can't assume anything, but, I mean, you got a five-run lead. Like, the time run's not going to come to the plate unless a run scores. It's now or never. Yeah. And that should not have been Chapman's game. Yeah. I strongly disagreed with him putting mm-hmm. Chapman in that game for game six. Yeah. In a way, I thought it kind of was the reason why Davis hit that home run. I mean, let's be honest here. If you looked at Chapman's stuff last oh, night. fastball wasn't there. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. No mm-hmm. movement on the fastball. Yeah. The velocity was 98, 97. Yep. And here we are saying, that's bad. But for Chapman, who typically hits 102, 103, yep. yeah. That yep. tick off of his miles uh-huh. per hour is very eye-opening. It makes mm-hmm. him more hittable. And that's what Davis was able to take advantage of. Yep. Now, the other move that I question as well, because mm-hmm. we're talking about questioning moves, and as a as a as a viewer and a fanatic on all this baseball stuff, yeah. I just love when something goes wrong so I can <laughs> criticize. So yeah. here we go. Uh-huh. The next move was Javier Baez. He mm-hmm. was up, I believe it was the top of the eighth, mm-hmm. and he elects to go for a bunt with a runner on third base. The count was two two. And he's trying to put the bunt down Mm -hmm. to get that run in. And he struck out because he didn't hit the ball. He fouled it. That's a strikeout. Yeah. I didn't particularly like that play. I thought right there would be one of the reasons why the Cubs would lose Mm because of that moment right there. Yeah, I I think I would tend to agree with that. Especially because it's not like the runner was at third base for the whole at bat. No. There was... Something or a wild pitch. There was he. The runner moved from second to third during hot Baez at bat. That's correct. So basically, he had one. The, they put the sign up for one pitch because that's the only time where the runner was at third. Yeah. So to me, that also adds an element of. I mean, sure, you need to be able to execute no matter what the situation is, but mm-hmm. that's a that's a big change. Like like Huge he's change. he's two two or three two and at bat looking to get a base hit, and now you're being asked to. Do a suicide squeeze. And I think everybody in the ballpark knew it was coming. I mean, they had a timeout. He was talking with his third base coach and what mm-hmm. was going on. Just flat out missed the ball. Yeah. So that call was from the manager. It had to something yeah. that partic- – it's National League style baseball, which I get. Mm-hmm. But in that sort of a moment with two strikes <laughs> on you, you know the pressure's on the guy. Yeah. Just put the ball in play. Mm-hmm. And he wasn't able to which do that. Which Bias was having trouble doing anyway. I mean, because yeah. because they were kind of remarking um, – Throughout the series, in the end, how Baez's swing was getting a little longer and longer every time. He was, was just trying to tear the cover off the ball. Yeah. So maybe that was part of it. He didn't have confidence. He could make contact. Yep. He was yep. expanding the zone. But I was. It was surprising. I mean, and it, and look, if if it if it works out and it works, then you know the, the reaction is different. But I think it it's fair to be to kind of question what was going on there. So those are some of the moves that we 
that at least I thought of during the game and said, why did those particular ones happen? Mm -hmm. That's why I gave the check mark to Francona on being the better manager of the two, yeah. him versus Madden. Mm -hmm. The top of the 10th came, and the rains came. The tarp had to go on the field. There was about a half an hour rain delay that was in this game. Mm -hmm. During that rain, rain delay, we heard after the Cubs won and yeah. everything, mm -hmm. Jason Hayward had a team meeting with all of his guys. Now, you may say, Jason Hayward, what did he do? Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. he really didn't do much of anything during the season. He had a very down year. Personally, I've always thought that he was a little bit overrated. I always thought that mm -hmm. he was a guy that there was a lot of hype over and not that much, uh, not that much for, for stats and numbers and mm -hmm. projections were put up from Jason Hayward. He had a very down year this year. But one of the things that's so underrated on a baseball club or any sports team is the amount of love a certain player has. Mm -hmm. Certain players are able to look up to other guys on teams to be that leader, mm -hmm. to be that guy that can calm things down, cool under pressure, and deliver. Well, Jason Haywood was able to do that. Mm -hmm. He put his team together. He said, you know what, guys? Let's reset here. Let's do this. We are only in this moment once in our life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they were able to pull it out after the rain delay and get that win. I looked at the rain as kind of uh, washing away the tears of all Cubs, uh -huh. Cubs fans yeah. and all players from mm -hmm. years past. And just saying, you know what? The skies finally stopped. They opened up. And now we have no more rain. Right. The tears are gone. It's going to end. Well, lo and behold, the Cubs were able to do yeah, it. Yeah, didn't waste any time right there at the top of the 10th. They had to wait 108 years for it. I don't think mm -hmm. that they minded the rain delay. No. But that, to me, was so significant in the timing, mm -hmm. how, it, how it happened in a tie game when yeah. everything's on the line. Mm -hmm. It's all those fans and all those people from 108 years saying, oh, why my team? It's, it's awful, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> The rain stops, game, can, game goes mm -hmm. on, Cubs are able to win. It was almost like, is the world going to end in a way when the <laughs> Cubs won to me? It was just crazy. It was crazy how it all happened. Yeah, it was very, it almost like there was a big deep breath like during the um, rain delay. Yeah. Initially, uh, I was because I was like, kind of following the one because I was like, oh, I don't want it to rain. Like, I want to get this game. I do in. too. Yeah, it was, so it was really disappointing they brought the tarp on the field, but then it was like super quick. Yeah. Um, and they came back, and I didn't know, I mean, no one knew that Hayward got them together until yeah. after the game when they no. started talking about it. Yeah. But um, it's, you it know, yeah, it all, I could see how it could feel like to them that, all right, it's a tie game. We had a little breather. Mm -hmm. No, it's a new game. We just need to get out there and keep going again. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I can only oh, some, one of them brought him up, whether it was Rizzo or Bryant or it might have been Hayward, but after um, or, or it might have been Ross actually, I don't know. But after that home run, mm -hmm. um, Davis's home run, you could see it, they could just be completely deflated. Yeah. And they get they got out of the inning. You know, they went to the next inning. Nothing happened, and then yeah. that may have given them a little chance to be like, okay, we're still here. Let's 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 get it done. Mm -hmm. Let's move forward and do this. Like we told you, Cubs able to get that win and all. You're able to hear about a lot of different stories about how they got there, mm -hmm. um, how much emotion went into it. You heard from a lot of players after the game. I personally wanted to watch that. I wanted to see the interviews. I wanted yeah. to see what everybody had to say and all. It was awesome to listen to David Ross. Yeah. And here's a guy mm -hmm. that I've always liked when he was a Red Sox. Uh -huh. David Ross was able to become that anchor behind the plate for when the Red Sox won the World Series in 2013. The amount of trust and the amount of, amount of leadership that he was able to bring to that team. They called him Grandpa Rossi. <laughs> yeah, Imagine I love that. Imagine going out in the game, in Game 7, <laughs> hitting a home run. Yeah. I mean, coming out, pitching with John Lester, your buddy, mm -hmm. getting the home run, and just leading your team to a, to a World Series. I mean, and your last game ever. In your the majors, last game too. ever. Yeah. I mean, t nothing but class from David Ross. Mm -hmm. But here was the number one reason on why I personally was rooting for the Cubs. I think you mm -hmm. probably heard it from previous shows that we've done before. And, yes, I am a big Terry Francona fan. I think a lot of people are. Mm -hmm. All right. That was one of the factors that 
really got me into the series. I'm a big Andrew Miller fan. You know, you could even say Coco Crisp. Uh, I'm not as big on Mike Napoli. Never mm -hmm. was that big on the strikeout and play. My guy has always been John Lester. Mm -hmm. Always has been. Ever mm -hmm. since he debuted with the Red Sox in 2006, came up, fought cancer, was able to deliver that wonderful no-hitter in 2008, got the Red Sox their 2013 World Series championship. Mm -hmm. It's almost to me like this guy just has something in him that mm -hmm. says, give me the ball, I'm going to get the job done. Yeah. He's, a, he's a bulldog. Mm -hmm. I was not surprised at all that he came out of the bullpen last night no, and, I wasn't and, and, and yeah. shut them down for the most part. Mm -hmm. I was not surprised. John Lester is so likable, and that's one of the reasons why, as, as a Red Sox fan, you can root for the Cubs. It, he's, he's so easy to root for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was able to define all odds and be able to be that World Series champion and World Series hero, if you look at it. What do you think of John Lester? Yeah, I, um, I admire him a lot just in the way he goes about his business. And, and not that he's, sure, he's, I mean, he's, he's a real solid pitcher. Um, great in the regular season and then, and then even better in the playoffs. But to me, the tell is like how pitchers go out there, or no matter what the players, because baseball is such a, a daily game. You know, it's, it's, it's a different kind of stamina. Mm -hmm. um, that he goes out there, especially in the playoffs, and does his job every time. And to me, that's what stands out. Because that's what, the, what is difficult is to replicate it. Right. And especially when the stage is the biggest. So the fact that he's able to go out there, have his stuff under control, basically every start, is, is uh, I respect it a lot. How much of a kick in the pants is this to Red Sox fans? Well, maybe not fans, but Red Sox owners. I don't know. It's worth discussion because... If they felt that they, this was their decision to not bring them back, mm -hmm. then they would probably feel blame. But I, I, I mean, it, I guess it depends on, on the situation, you know, because if they had that under control, then, yeah, I would, I would assume that they would, they would feel something. Anybody out there know or have John Henry's phone number? Because I would like to lock him in a room right now and just watch the Leicester post-game conference and everything, just mm -hmm. on loop for the next year, just so he can see uh -huh. what a World Series champion is. Unlike the buffoon you have in David Price, worth $217 million. You could have had John Lester for 155. Mm -hmm. That is True. so stupid. Mm -hmm. So stupid. But we don't make the calls. No, we don't. It's true. That's what the, that's what the, guy, that's what the billionaires make those calls mm -hmm. for. And unfortunately, that's something in my eyes that's going to be regretted for a long time. Long time. But, in, but for the players that were former Red Sox yes. that are on this team that won. Yes. For them, I assume most Red Sox fans would feel like Oh, exactly like them. I am. Yeah. Positive, happy. Yeah. Rooting for them, as always, mm -hmm. just like we did. And Theo, same, same deal. Same deal with yeah. Theo. Mm -hmm. I mean, he has another thing. Yes, John Lester I was a huge fan of, but I also was always a Theo Epstein fan. Mm -hmm. As soon as he came in in 2002, as a matter of fact, he changed the complexity of the Red Sox. Mm -hmm. He brought in gamers, grinders, yep. character guys. Well, guess what he did with the Cubs? Same thing. Did the same thing. Yep. Built them from the ground up. That minor league system they have is flawless. They're going to be great I'm, for yeah, many it's still, years. Yeah, it's still great. Like, it's hard to believe how much talent they got down there. Where does Theo Epstein now rank in your eyes? I mean, no one's done what he has. Yeah. I mean, at least with regard to bringing franchises that are historically have failed in big spots to yeah. put them over the edge. No one's done that. Nope. He's done it twice now. Yeah. Red Sox, 86 years. Mm -hmm. Cubs, 108. And he's put both franchises well at that time in a position to be good for years yes he has you know i mean it's not like it's a one and done sort of thing i mean they they have they have a lot going on is he the best executive ever in the game of baseball it's hard to, it's hard for me to compare those because i'm i don't i don't follow executives in front offices super clearly mm -hmm. um but I guess the, really the bottom line is a, is the success now mm -hmm. there are some gms um who have had more numerical worlds like world series oh, more, more guy, tallies more tallies san francisco giants yeah. brian sabian yeah general manager over there he's got three mm -hmm. world series champions since 2010 yeah. or you look at something like the yankees in the late 90s you know with, with that dynasty four to five or yeah. something 
But and I know the Giants had a drought before they won that first one. Sure. Um, uh, the first of the three, but to me, there's just something different about that. Like he took, he just erased two huge droughts mm-hmm. in two in two storied franchises in in baseball. To, that's personally, be hard personally, to my eyes. He can walk right through the door at the Baseball Hall of Fame, and he's already in. Mm-hmm. If he decided to retire from the game of baseball, said, I'm done, I'm going to go back home and just retire, mm-hmm. just be with my family, I'm done. He's a Hall of Famer. Mm-hmm. He is one of the best masterminds that there ever has been in the game of baseball. Yeah. Yes, I know that is strong words from me. All I have to say, 86, 108. You took franchises that were in such a hole that people didn't believe that they could win ever again. Mm-hmm. And he was able to change it. That's just unbelievable unbelievable to me. Yeah. And what makes me sick is that the Red Sox departed with him and kept Larry the buffoon Lucchino. Mm-hmm. I don't care if he, if he has family in North Reading or the... That was the biggest mistake the Red Sox have made. Not John Lester. It was getting rid of the Epstein. Go ahead. You go to the Cubs. We'll keep Larry. Larry runs the Red Sox. Well, don't you look like a fool today, John Henry. Don't you look like a fool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's. Hard. I mean, you can't not notice what the, the success of what's going on and how they were former Red Sox, especially because it was talked about so much. I mean, you look everywhere in the field and in the office, it's just like you see so many of them. And, you, and it, I, would, I would imagine for the Red Sox, when it makes you wonder what could have happened if even a couple of the guys stayed or, mm-hmm. you know, if things were different. But it created a great atmosphere and a great World Series. That, it's just, it was just so fun. I yeah. mean, I'm going to look back at this for so many years and say, I'm going to know exactly where I was when the Cubs won their World Series. Mm-hmm. I'm going to remember this. I'm going to pass it down. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to have that with me. Yeah, for the rest of uh, for the rest of my life, which mm-hmm. I think is just amazing to be able to say that you saw the Cubs finally win yeah. a World Series, just like how. I mean, I guess we're real lucky. We've seen the Red Sox, yeah. and now we've seen the Cubs. It's been I mean, twelve man. years, yeah. Maybe we're the luckiest mm-hmm. kids on earth. Who knows? <laughs> or guys, whatever you want to say. I still think I'm a kid, which is fine. Um, anything else that we should discuss about this World Series? I mean, the storylines are. I mean, there are a lot, a lot more storylines, but um, I mean, that's that's just that's the major stuff. And I mean, you can always talk about like where do the teams go from here? Because mm-hmm. um, I mean, it's sure it's the day after, so there's not there's really there's so much else to talk about about the series. But um, I was I was kind of hoping that the Indians would win because um, the Cubs to me are gonna be back like several times. This it's and built, the it's Indians, built for the long haul. Yeah, the Indians were kind of, you know, a little a little more not fluky, but you know, they had they had something going. You, you weren't sure how much that was gonna um, you know, how frequently they were gonna come back. So I was I was I was kinda hoping for them. They were at home. Um, again, Tara Francona, some of the other players, I know they were a little depleted. Um, but the other thing is the the young the young team with the Cubs, I was also expecting that this is a quick turnaround for the Cubs. Like, they were losing, and then two years, they World Series. I was expecting I they would blow it I, again I did and too. maybe come back next year. A lot yeah. of people were looking for that 2003 moment from when Aaron Boone yeah. hit the home run against the Red Sox. Mm-hmm. A lot of people thought, you know what? Maybe this is going to go on another year. Some people were actually rooting for that, which is sick. <laughs> you people are sick. Nobody needs to suffer that long. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, you're right. To think about how quick they were able to have that turnaround is just, yeah. just awesome. And it takes the, a special group of players to do it. It does, and it's so young. Like, you saw some of the guys coming. Yeah. I mean, Anthony Rizzo is still young, and he's been on the team for six years. I know. He's been through four of those losing seasons. Yep. And then with the rest of the team, a lot of the major players that are, like, younger than him. Is this the best team in baseball? Uh, the, the Cubs? Yeah. I, right now, yes. Okay. Yeah, I would say so. I yep. mean, again, you don't know what they're going to look like next year, especially what the bullpen will look like, but, I mean – I mean, they proved it, and they rolled. They won 103 games in the regular season. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I know they were down 3-1. Yep. But they did it. They're absolutely the best team in baseball. Yeah. I, no question in my eyes about it. Mm-hmm. Better than the Red Sox, better than the Indians. And actually, my feeling on the Indians, I don't think they're back. I yeah. Don't. I kinda, yeah, I, I kind of get that I think this, th- yeah. th- this was catching lightning in a bottle mm-hmm. for them. It was they got hot at a really key time. 
They weren't supposed to beat the Red Sox. Mm -hmm. They really weren't supposed to beat the Blue Jays. They just happened to get there. Yeah. Yes, that has to do with great pitching and great things that happened. You don't get there without Terry Francona. You don't get there without guys stepping up in the clutch and delivering. 100% agree on that. But I think I think we'll see, we could definitely see the Cubs return and, re, and repeat. But I also think that you will see a different American League team. I do. Could it yeah. be the Red Sox? Maybe it is. Mm -hmm. I still want to see the Red Sox Cubs in a World Series. That would be a I lot of fun. I still do. Yeah. That would be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And we almost did get a chance to see it, but unfortunately the Indians were the uh, prevailing team there. Mm -hmm. um, overall, just my final thoughts on the World Series. Again, it was so fun. It was kind of, it, Even though your home team really wasn't in there, there was so much to root about it. There was so much to like about the game of baseball. And that series and what we saw there was the reason why I love baseball so yeah. much. It's unpredictable. Mm -hmm. It's... Yeah. It's just awesome. To you get never know what you're going to see. You, you can always see something you know, new you haven't you seen before. You can kind before. of expect yeah. things in football. Mm -hmm. You can kind of expect those key moments. But again, this is what makes sports so fun. Mm -hmm. And that's why we get a chance to talk about them with you and break down certain things. Maybe we have difference of opinions, which is always great, too. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it's all about the fun, the excitement, the, the thrill of being a part of something that you'll never be able to take that away from anybody. Yeah. So. And to me, another thing I love to watch is how the top players are going to perform. Right. You know, whether or not it's expected of them. Yeah. Um, like, like I brought up Kluber a couple times. That, that's something I was really looking forward to seeing how it was going to go. I mean, the one and only guy who they needed, mm -hmm. well, not, not that they needed, but the fact that they knew he had to be successful for them to win this. Right. Um, and to keep going like that. Yep. And then with the with the bullpens and the relievers and the closers, yep. um, and just all the, the the and with the Cubs it was a little different because there were a lot of young guys, but it was cool to see which guys kind of broke through and how they kind of reacted to the big stage, mm -hmm. um, and you saw a couple of them do really well, and that's and that's what prevailed. It certainly was. Mm -hmm. It certainly was. Um, to close out our World Series segment, we just want to do a very quick top five moments that we mm -hmm. thought during this series that stood out the most to us. Mm -hmm. Could be from the Indians postseason ride or the Cubs postseason ride. Mm -hmm. So does anything stick out to you the most? Top five postseason or World Series? Um, I just didn't hear what you said. That was Let's make it postseason. Okay. Um, what defined them? I think the um and to stay in the American League, I think the statement the Indians made sweeping the Red Sox in the yep. first round. Yep. That opened my eyes. That did like, too. I mean, sure, we expected the Red Sox to kind of handle the Indians pretty, pretty easily. Yeah. Um, but I was like, wow, what, what just happened? Yep. I, did, I didn't really expect it. And they kind of took off from there. Yep. Mm -hmm. My moment was uh, definitely when the Cubs advanced against, uh, it, I think it was the Dodgers, mm -hmm. was it not? Yeah. Um, the, that right there it. showed to me that they're not going to be a one and done. They're mm -hmm. going to get there from the ground up and mm -hmm. just deliver and try their best to get to a World Series. That, that was pretty special to see that because mm -hmm. the Dodgers were actually a hot team. They had Kershaw and uh, yep. Kenley Jensen who mm -hmm. were trying to come out and do the best job they could. And the Cubs were able to hit them, and they were able to get themselves to the World Series. So that yeah. was a good moment for me. Yeah, another thing was um, in the Division Series in the National League with the Giants and Cubs, yeah. there was always something in the back of my mind, maybe because the, the way the Giants won the Wild Card game and that – you know, even year stuff, you know, the Giants, maybe they'll go. They got Madison yep. Bumgarner. Yep. They have other pitching. Yep. But I think the fact that um, Madison Bumgarner threw game three, even though the Giants won that game, the, Red, the, the Cubs hit him. Mm -hmm. they, they hit him well. Um, and then they went on to win, win game four and kind of take care of that series. Yep. So that, that kind of broke the things Giants up The Giants was me. always that obstacle I thought was in the way. The yeah. Cubs, Giants, because mm -hmm. of Bumgarner's track record. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. The Cubs were able to beat the Giants. That was a five-game series, right? They won in the game four in game San Francisco. Four. Game so, four. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was uh, something that was pretty neat to see there, too. Um, let me think. Another great moment that I thought was against the Blue Jays. Just in general with the Indians right there. The Blue Jays had a very good offensive team, mm -hmm. and the Indians were just able to shut them down. Yep. They made mm -hmm. them non-existent for the most part. So... Believing in the Indians getting to, to the World Series was just, is this really happening? Really? Really? Mm -hmm. So that, that kind of led me to believe that, you know what, maybe the Indians do have a chance. And it also showed me how great Terry Francona is as the manager. Mm -hmm. Just being able to have these guys believe in themselves yeah. to get to the big yeah. stage. That stood out Still to me too. Them. Yeah. Yeah, the other 
the main, I think one of the big turning points of the World Series was that game five home run from Chris Bryant um, yes. that tied the game yes. because then I think, because again, similar, <laughs> kind of similar to the NLCS where the Cubs were struggling offensively until they broke out um, in that game four. I mean, the Cubs really weren't hitting much. I mean, the first couple of games of the series were pretty low scoring. Right. And pitching was dominating. But I think once, even though it was a solo home run and they just tied the game, I think once Chris Bryant homered um, and tied, tied up that game five, even though it was early in the game, I think that kind of set everyone a little more at ease. Mm -hmm. And I think from there they were able to build on that. I liked game after game five when the fans were just going crazy, believing in themselves, mm -hmm. believing that, you know, the Cubs are going to win today. That's signifying that song that they had, that Hey Chicago song. Mm -hmm. So that was um, that was a defining moment to me. That said, you know what? These fans are gonna, these fans of this team believe in themselves, mm -hmm. and they're gonna come back and do this. So that was another moment that was real special to me. Um, the other moment was uh, Rajai Davis's home run. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. that right there said the Indians are not gonna go down without a fight, mm -hmm. and they grinded it out the best they could, and they tried their best to get the win. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then, well, to me, not that this was a turning point, but when they, when Davis again got that RBI base hit in the ninth inning, it was, I mean, in the 10th inning to put it one run away. And, the again. and, then, and again, the Cubs, they had brought in pitchers who Madden didn't really trust before. I mean, no. Chapman was gone. They had Edwards Carl and then Edwards Montgomery. The NASCAR driver. Yeah. Oh, does he just Carl Edwards is a NASCAR oh, driver, too. So I had a little bit yeah. of a funny story about that, too. I'm like, oh, everybody buckle up. We're in for a fast ride. <laughs> Carl Edwards is coming in. So some people yeah. picked up on the joke. Um, I was tweeting during the game. So a couple people were <laughs> like, funny. oh, that's so funny. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. But, um, I mean, when he got that base, I mean, Edwards got two outs. Team was going fine. When he got that base hit after the walk, it was like, yeah. wow. This is continuing. I mean, yeah. obviously, it, it didn't go that way, which kind of surprised me. I was like, after after Chris Bryant threw it over the first, I was like, all right, it's over. Right. No more. <laughs> yep. Well, the number one play for me that signified everything was the ground ball to Chris Bryant. Mm -hmm. That finally showed me the Cubs are going to get the World Series <laughs> championship. Yeah. Actually, it was before the ball hit the glove because they went back on replay, and Bryant is smiling. Before the ball really? is in the glove, you're gonna go see back that. and see the picture. Oh man! But actually, it's, it's on my Twitter page. If any of you want to go to my uh, Twitter page for huh. uh, face the facts, you can do that. He's smiling. The ground ball. <laughs> he's got this big, big grin on his face, and then he throws it, throw, threw it over to Rizzo. He knew that he was gonna make that play, mm -hmm. and it was gonna be the World Series. And he actually game. slipped after he threw it. He I did. Don't know if you saw that because the grass yeah, was he did he just slip. fell. Yeah. So it was that was pretty cool to see that right there. Mm -hmm. Um, other things that, that also stood out, we also had the, um, the MVP. We talked about Ben Zobrist. Mm -hmm. He got the MVP oh, of yeah. the World Series. Does he deserve it? I think so. I mean, I know from last year, we were frustrated to see how many doubles he got in the World Series. Like, it seemed like every other bat, he was on second base with, with yeah. another base hit. Yeah. And he had, like, 350 in the series, had a couple big, I mean, obviously that big hit in the 10th in the um, yeah. put the Cubs ahead, but... Yeah. Um, he, I think he deserves it. I mean, right. the most consistent. He get, always gives in that bat, does mm -hmm. his job in the field. Um, he's, he's a winning player. I don't know how else to put it. Well, I think we're going to keep it very basic here today. It's going to just be the World Series show. Fine, that's all that me, deserves. Yeah. That's all that's deserving of, of any kind of mention on today's show. Um, we are going to leave you with some high school um, highlights that are upcoming from the week, which is um, a sit-down that I had with Mel Webster, who's a staple here in the community of North Reading. Brad, I want to thank you very much for being here after the party. Yeah, you're welcome. My pleasure. Of this wonderful World Series. The Chicago Cubs are finally the 2016 World Champions. That's just How do you like goosebumps. that? Yeah. Goosebumps <laughs> feeling. Welcome to Face to Facts. I am Nick Face, and I hope you're all having a great week this week. Joining me to my left today is a newcomer to Face the Facts, Mel Webster. How are you, Mel? Very good, Nick. A newcomer to Face the Facts, an old comer in North Reading. Well, <laughs> welcome to our show. We're very excited to have you here today. I know one of the things that you're here to talk about is the North Reading sports scene. And I know it's been quite a season over there at North Reading High School. Yeah, we're uh, right now into the most exciting part of the season for high school athletics. We've got exactly. the state tournaments. Uh, some of them have already started, and, and many of them are, are about to start. Uh, North Reading has three teams that have already qualified, mm -hmm. and a fourth team, the boys' soccer team, which is hoping to qualify. Right. They have two games remaining right. uh, on, the, on the season. Um, 
football team has had a great season, mm -hmm. led by uh, Matt McCarthy and Kyle Bythrow on the offensive side. Uh, mm -hmm. McCarthy is the number one uh, and number one in scoring for Division Two A in Massachusetts with yep. 17 touchdowns this year. And he and Bythrow have become a Bythrow is the quarterback, and they yep. run a they run a read option offense, and Bythrow has become um, a great sidekick for uh, Matt McCarthy, and mm -hmm. he's probably I'm I'm not sure how many touchdowns he has, but the last three games I've been to, he scored every one. I think mm -hmm. he's probably got seven or eight touchdowns, so they've become mm -hmm. a, quite a tandem. Um, this week they'll be playing Bedford in okay. the first round of the uh, Division Two A playoffs, and uh, hopefully there'll be a big crowd at. Uh, uh, Kenny Field to cheer the team and th on. That's over in North Reading? Yes. Okay. Yes, that's very is. good. So the community can come out and definitely Absolutely. watch uh, Absolutely. the football team and all. Have they had any history between the two teams? Is the, have, have Bedford and North Reading faced off against each other? They're in different leagues, but last year they played, uh, after both loss in the playoffs, the state has this system where once you lose in the playoffs and they kind of rejigger the schedule and yeah. set up games, North Reading actually beat New Bedford, uh, excuse me, Bedford last year, 21-0. Wow, so, okay. And it was at Bedford. So I think that's the only time they've, the two teams have ever played. Sometimes in this playoff system, which is new and all, there are sometimes scrimmage games that some of these teams play before the season right. and everything begins. Boy, does that make it really beneficial. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. I know for, um, I've heard a lot of hype for the uh, North Reading team and all this year. One of the things that happened recently was Fox 25 came for Game of the Week. Were you at that game? Or I, can you? I was at the game. Okay. Um, I know that uh, I was also participating in the voting, and uh, you know, I had uh, I think I had carpal tunnel after the voting was over. Yeah. But it was uh, interesting because there was a, a Danvers Lynn English game, I believe, and we okay. were both kind of going neck and neck. I, I, actually, it was Marblehead and Lynn English. Marblehead, we were going neck okay. and neck. And I think North Reading ended up with over 29,000 votes, and Butch Stern said it was wow. one of the highest totals they've ever had. He came out, yep. they had a program, especially for Butch Stearns, they had his name on the front, they had the logo for that? Fox 25. Yep. And as you know, the weather last Friday was miserable. It was, horrible. It was a torrential downpour oh, in the third and fourth quarters. Um, but it was a great game. Yep. Uh, I was there, um, soaked through to the bone. And it was, it, it, it's the first, uh, the victory gave North Reading their first Cape Ann League Championship since 1980. In football, no kidding. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's so, fantastic. To and see. Uh, you know, Dave Johnson, the athletic director, yeah. thought ahead and he went up to the, the the guy who makes the plaques for the championships, and he mm -hmm. said, "Look, can I have the plaque mm -hmm. if we do win?" And right. he was able to convince the guy to give him the plaque. So we actually were able to give the How team. He was able to give the plaque to the coach, yeah. and they presented it to the team that night. So do they get that on air and everything? Yeah. From Fox Twenty. Yeah. Oh, and, how how yeah. fantastic that and, is. And uh, you know, the, our local paper, the Transcript, this week has a great picture on the front page of. Uh, some of the fans, a lot of the um, the male students uh, were shirtless in the cold oh, and geez. pouring rain, and they had hornets spelled yeah. out, and yeah. it was just it was really a festive time, and yeah. it was a great time despite the fact that the weather was, was miserable. Right. So. I know I was uh, doing the uh, Reading game. Oh. I do I broadcast some of the right. Reading high school games, and it, it's been brutal these Friday nights being in the cold and all. I know. It looks like that might happen again for this upcoming week exactly. too. Yeah. But we wish the football team yep. very very well, yep. a very great job they've done so far exactly. this season. We wish them well in this post. Yep season and all. Are there any other teams throughout here in North Reading that deserve some recognition? Yeah, to? there are a few teams I wanted to um, mention, Nick. One that doesn't get a lot of visibility is the golf team. Yes. Um, golf has been an extremely successful sport at North yep. Reading High School for many years. Uh, this year they won their second straight Cape Ann League title okay. and uh, they will be participating in the state Division Three finals. Okay. Um, I, it's somewhere out in central Massachusetts. I'm mm -hmm. not sure where. And Logan Stansberry the captain of the team was uh, named the Cape Ann League Golfer of the Year oh, this year. So, uh, you know, they finished 12-1, and 10-1 yeah. uh, and one in the league. And uh, so I just want to wish the, the golf team a, a lot of success out at the state finals. And as I said, you know, not a lot of fans go to the golf matches yeah. and, you know, follow them around a golf course. So yeah. I, I like to give some of the lesser um, visible sports a little they, bit They a do deserve credit. All, yeah. these te all these kids that go out there and participate in something. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Trying, trying our best to make sure they get some publicity and some, uh, exactly. and some nice support is always beneficial, too. Exactly. Just one quick point. This yes. year at North Reading, uh, I think it's uh, the most students we've ever had playing uh, athletics in the fall season. It's over 360 wow. out of about 800 yep. kids at the school. Yep. So, you know, athletics is important to a lot of, of kids. It's is. important to their education. Of so. course it is. And it's important to the community exactly. as well, exactly. as we saw from that vote from the Fox right. 25. That's amazing right. how many people right. voted for that. Yeah. Um, any other teams? So there's two, um, two more teams uh, 
one team that's already qualified for the states, and that's the uh, girls' soccer program. Okay. Um, that's been revitalized over the past few years by Coach Sean Colleen, who's also okay. principal of the Batch Helder School in North Reading. Okay. And uh, since he's come back, he was the coach previously, he took about sure. seven or eight years off. Yeah. They won, the girls won the Division North final, uh, North Championship last year. Okay. And lost in the state semifinals. Yep. And they finished their season uh, yesterday with a 13-4-1 record. So they should be a pretty high seed. That's a great record. In the state yep. uh, Division Three uh, tournament. And then on the boys' side, uh, they right now have a 500 record. They yep. need two points in their last two games uh, to make So they're right there. They're right they're there. They're right there. They, they just need... Right. How do they get the two points? Is it from a win? A win a is two points. Or... A tie is a point. So they have two non-league games left. They, okay. they had a, a, a great win the other night over arch rival Linfield, 3-0. Okay. Yeah. So they have a 7-7-2 seven, seven and two record. Okay. Um, they have... Uh, Drake it and St. Mary's, which is always a tough, uh, tough team to play as their last two games, both okay. non-league games. So if they tied both games, they yep. get in. They win one, yep. they get in. Um, historically, North Reading's had a strong soccer program, so okay. uh, I'm hoping that they can uh, get one more and pull it and out and get into the get states, to that, get to that championship yeah. and all. Yeah. Well, Mel, I really appreciate you giving us a little recap on how everything North Reading is going. We want to wish the community out there as well a uh, a great job and a much, hopefully a much, a very long ride yep. as this playoff journey continues for them. So we'll keep you updated great. on Face the Facts with um, everything that goes on. And Mel, I really appreciate you joining me today and giving us a little recap on everything. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much.